Hello and welcome everybody, my name is Paul Besson, I am from the University of Manchester and this is the first part of a series of tutorials in which I will be discussing data analysis and chemometrics for Raman, infrared and mass spectroscopy data. So part one is very simple, I will just be talking about what a spectrum actually is. So a little bit about me, I did a degree in physics at the University of Warwick uh, followed by a medical physics master's degree and a PhD in the Peter Gardner lab on me scattering in FTIR spectroscopy. Currently I'm doing a postdoc with Peter Gardner uh, in cancer diagnostics using infrared spectroscopy. And this is me over here with the red square around my head. So a quick outline of this tutorial. We'll be discussing what a spectrum is and how we deal with many spectra, followed by some very simple data analysis. So first of all, what is a spectrum? If you were to open up one spectrum in Excel, you would see two columns of numbers. The first column of numbers is the wave number values. Here we have 900, 904, 908. The second column is the absorbance values at each wave number. If we plot each of these pair of points on a graph, we get something which looks like this. For those of you who are familiar with biological spectra uh, measured with infrared, this will be very familiar. Now what's important to note here is that the spectrum at this stage just exists as a series of data points. What, what commonly is done is that those data points are connected with a line so that visually they look nicer. But it's very important to remember that a spectrum exists as a series of numbers, it's very much discrete. So how do we organize many spectra? If someone asks us to look at the differences between say 25 spectra, the first thing that we can do is discard the wave number values. The reason for that is that if we just have a look at the wave number values for spectrum 1 and compare it to, say, the wave number values for spectrum 3, they have the exact same wave number values. So when you do any sort of comparison on these, you'll see that they are identical. Uh, and that's not what we're interested in looking at. What is of interest to us is the absorbance values for each spectrum. So what we can do is just discard that first column of the wave number values as it's constant for every single spectrum. Now, I'm talking about absorbance values. If this was Raman data, we would be talking about Raman shift values. If it was data for mass spectroscopy, we would be talking about in intensities at each m over z value. So, matrix organization of spectrum. A matrix is just a big table of numbers. Each of these rows in this table of numbers corresponds to a spectrum. So here I have spectrum 1. All the numbers here are the absorbance values for that spectrum. And the same is true for spectrum 2, that all the values in row 2 are for spectrum 2. If we have a look at this column-wise, we see that the first column is the absorbance values at 900 centimeters to the minus 1 for each spectrum. And the second column is the absorbance values at 904 centimeters to the minus 1 for all the spectrum. People talk about the dimensions of a matrix. The, a matrix has two dimensions, the number of rows and the number of columns. If you have 10,000 spectra, then you will have 10,000 rows. We will call the number of rows n. So n will equal 10,000 if you have 10,000 spectra. If each of your spectra has, say, 700 absorbance values, then it will have 700 columns. We call k the number of columns. So k would equal 700 if you had 700 absorbance values in each of your spectra. So now I'm going to move over to a very quick practical demonstration using some data to talk about the concept of a spectrum. So in this folder here, you can ignore this for the moment, we have two folders here. Class 1 healthy, class 2 cancer. Inside this folder here we have some infrared spectra. We have 50 spectra to be precise as you can see here and each of these is a CSV file. I'm just going to open one of these CSV files to have a look at what's inside. Your data might exist in Opus format or Varian for example, but uh, essentially they contain the same information. So as we mentioned earlier, a spectrum is two columns of numbers and that's what we can see in this CSV file. This column of numbers here and another column of numbers here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy these three values here into a text file and the reasons for this will become obvious a bit later. And what's important to remember is that each of these 50 spectra in this folder contains information very similar to what we just saw in that uh, Excel spreadsheet. If we have a look at the second folder called Cancer, we have 48 items. That's because we have 48 spectra in this directory. So I'm now going to move over to MATLAB to do a couple of quick things. 
So first of all, I am in my current folder, which is the Manchester data, which we were just looking at, healthy and cancer. I'm just going to get rid of that. I'm going to import my data using a, a software package that I've written. It's called Basin Spectrum Analysis. And this automatically goes and finds your data in those folders. It's found 50 spectra for us in class 1, and it knows that the name of those spectra is healthy. And for class 2, it knows that there are 48 spectra and the name is cancer. And we have a total of 98 spectra. It's also telling us that each spectrum has 776 data points. So what I'm going to do now is just quickly show you what this data matrix looks like. So just give me a second to bring it up for you. So we have a big table of numbers. So we'll first of all start with the number of rows. If we scroll down, we see that we have a total of 98 rows, which is exactly correct because we have 98 spectra. So I'm just going to go back up to the top again. Now we're going to scroll across the columns and see how many columns we have. We have exactly 776 columns, which is correct. And our little summary here told us that each spectrum has 776 data points. Now remember that I copied some values into a text file earlier. So these three numbers here, they were the first three absorbance values from spectrum 1. So let's have a look here. Row 1 is spectrum 1. The first three values here, which are these numbers here, correspond exactly to these. These have been rounded to four decimal points, but you can see the 0 0.0027 is this first value. This 29 is in reference to this one, and this 0 0.0032 is this one. So the, these are the absorbance values for spectrum 1, as we saw in the uh, spreadsheet that we opened. So I'm just going to close this and minimize these guys, and go back into our Manchester data folder. Here is a little program that I've written which runs without MATLAB, which is a, a nice feature. If we just run this, we get something that looks a little bit boring, but we can do some quite powerful things with this. So this is a similar interface to what we saw before. It tells us how many spectra there are in each of our folders and the name of each folder. So one of the first things that we might be interested in doing is just plotting all of our spectra. Remember, we have 98 spectra, so this might look a bit messy. So we type in plot all. And what this does for us is plots uh, a bunch of spectra. As we have 98, a lot of these lines are overlapping almost perfectly, so it's difficult to see them. What we will do is we'll just zoom in on a little area where it looks like there's something interesting happening. And as we can see, suddenly we can just about resolve the individual lines corresponding to each spectrum. So the first 50 spectra, which were the healthy spectra, are the black lines. So. What, what else might we want to do? Let's have a look at the mean of each group. So we'll type in plot means. Now we have two spectra corresponding to the mean of the healthy data and the mean of the cancer data. And again, we can zoom in and have a look at what the differences are in these two groups of data. And we can see that there's something interesting going on here. The rest of the spectrum looks reasonably stable. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select this region of the spectrum and run a quick PCA. The way that that's done is we just type in select range from 1000 to 1800 and I will we can just have a look at what those means look like now and as we can see the data has been cut down to that range which is exactly what we wanted to run a PCA on this data we just have to type in PCA and we will want to see the scores plot so scores of principal component 1 against principal component 2 we hit enter and here we have a very very simple uh, scores plot for principal component 1 against principal component 2 and we can see that the data has some clear differences. So in the upcoming tutorials I'm going to be discussing in a lot more detail how PCA for example works and going through some of the other features in these software packages that I've written. So thank you very much for listening and this is the end of the first tutorial. Tune in for our, my next tutorial which will be along in a few days hopefully. Thank you very much.